Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the savior, and for this video, I am going to give you 25 tips for um, university students in Japan, specifically those of you that are struggling with classes, like how I personally did my first year here. I have a lot of regrets from that, so I want to share what I've done since then um, to fix my situation, to help me to graduate, as well as what I'm working on right now. I'm actually starting over again with another degree and another certification course that I'm doing. So anyway, as always, Different things work for different people, different schools run and function differently. So these are just generic tips because it's 25 to keep the video from being three hours long. I'm gonna try to keep my points short. So read between the lines, you can figure out what exactly is it that you need to do. Number one, arrive early and stay late at your classes. If you come to class early, you don't have to worry about missing anything. You can ask questions, etc. And same thing goes for staying late. It gives you time to really let everything sink in. You're not having to rush. It's just so much easier than if you're always popping in and showing up late. That's a sure way to make sure that you fail your class, um, whether it be because of your lack of attendance or you missing out on information that your professor went over while you were away. Number two, don't miss class even if you are sick. Now again, I'm speaking in normal circumstances. I know everything going on in the world right now makes this a different situation. But as things do calm down, as I hope they will eventually, if you can, by all means, always go to class even if you are very, very sick. If you are able to function and walk, and you're not in the point where you need to be hospitalized, but you just need some Motrin and you can sit at home and take a cough drop, go to class. Sit in the back, wear a mask, keep yourself away from other people. Once again, I'm not referring to the current state the world is in. I'm speaking in general, normal terms. Because if you stay at home, you're going to end up missing out on important notes. Your friends probably didn't take notes as good as you would have. And let's be real, using your friend's notes is never the same as physically being in class yourself. Never miss a day unless it's absolutely 100% necessary. Show up for class, don't talk yourself out of it. Is it really gonna hurt you to spend 40 minutes or two hours at school? You know, is it really gonna kill you to do that? You probably don't live that far away from your school to begin with, you can make it, trust me. If worse comes to worse, you really feel awful, your teacher will understand why you need to be excused and will see that you at least tried to make it there. If you are, you know, highly contagious, you have something really bad like the flu, fine, stay at home. But again, you need to make some type of way to catch up and get the information that you missed. So don't use that missed day because you were sick as an excuse to just let your class go and fail. I've been there, done that. Number three. Plan regular meetings with your professor. While this totally depends on what school you go to, um, there are multiple schools that do allow you to meet with your professor, normally at a university. I would know because I'm actually working at one right now. Um, you are required as a professor to stay at the school even after you're done teaching your classes. It's supposed to be both for you to prep as well as to give students the chance to get one-on-one -on -one tutoring and plan meetings with you to work on ways they can focus and you know improve their grades, etc. So you need to take advantage of this. Meet with your professor, express your concerns, um, tell them that you know, hey, I normally struggle with math. I have a bad memory. You know, I know that I'm probably not going to do good in history, so I'm doing everything that I can to keep my grade good and they will definitely remember this when they are grading your work you know your finals etc they will keep this in mind and honestly they'll be flattered that you're taking school so seriously they will want to help you and work with you but if you're making no effort to meet with them you're not showing that you care about your grade well what do you think is going to happen when they're torn between hmm should I grade that paper harsh and give them an F or should I say, you know, they tried really, really hard to get a good grade. I'm going to give them a D, let them pass or a C, whatever it is that you're required to get at your school. Number four, talk to both your guidance counselor and your professor about getting tutoring. Now, this is different from your regular meeting where, you know, your professor might brief you over what you guys are doing in class and try to see if you understand. But you can arrange actual tutoring with the work study program at your school and which is no cost to you. But that student it's a you know exchange. So the student gives you information. You are helping them get money through the school. The school is paying them to tutor you. You don't have to pay for the tutoring. So get tutoring. You can get help with arranging this from both your guidance counselor and your professor. So don't put that off. The longer you wait for tutoring, the further behind you're going to get. 
get it now, get it right away, even if you think you don't need it. Whoever's tutoring you is already a master. They have either a B or A in this subject, so they already know what you need to know in order to pass the class. They can help you practice on stuff in advance before you've even gotten it. And they can even go over your syllabus with you, which would be super, super helpful. Number five. Make small talk with your classmates. They can help you with forming study groups later on. And of course you can exchange notes, get help, talk about the difficulties in your class. I promise you for some crazy strange reason, I feel like you absorb information better in your class and you're more focused when you know that you have friends. While of course, as a kid, even an adult, having friends can be distracting because you're probably thinking, oh my God, I can't wait till class is over. We're gonna go out drinking for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, that was me. But at the same time, having friends in your class makes you feel more confident. You're not afraid to speak. You're not afraid to raise your hand and ask questions because you know these people. It gets rid of a lot of the anxiety that you have in your class. I promise you it helps. Number six, always complete extra credit. And if it's not being given, ask for it. Even if your instructor insists they don't give it. Take any opportunity to get extra points because you never know when you will get a bad grade, make a mistake on a paper or do anything else. You'll appreciate that extra credit that can possibly be the difference between a C or a D or a B or an A, which can really, really help you and your GPA. So again, take advantage of extra credit options. Number seven, always, always, always take notes and take pictures of anything that your professor bothers to put on the board. You should also be briefly taking notes as your professor talks. Anything that they're spending a long time talking about or stressing over is probably important and note take worthy. Of course, you'll probably find yourself writing things that you don't need to use and that will never be talked about, whatever. But honestly, a lot of your classes are super good. It's important information that you can use to share with other people, save for later and help you with another class. Always take notes. It's better to be safe than sorry. And nowadays with smartphones, there's no excuse. If you're someone that writes slow, you can easily take a picture of what's on the board. But do not forget it is important for you to write your notes. I personally find that I, you know, retain my information better if I write my notes physically myself versus taking a photograph of it because the likelihood of you looking back at that picture is slim to none. But after you've written those notes on the board, it's kind of mentally in your head because you've kind of had to say it to yourself because you're trying to write it down and copy the information from the board. So always, always, always take notes, take pictures. You need to know what's going on in class and get a refresher, a reminder of what's happening for when you leave. This will help you study later on. Number eight, I know it can seem like a lot, but honestly, you need to read any materials that have been assigned to you. If you do fall behind, don't use this as an excuse to, you know, give up. You can always skim through everything, but this is why it's important to get started right away. As soon as you know you have an assignment, or really why looking at your syllabus will save your life, but I'll get to that stuff later, I think. Um, you really, really, really want to make sure that you don't make that mistake. If you are someone that is a slow reader or doesn't like to read, if you make the mistake of ignoring your reading, etc., you will have tests, quizzes, and even your finals where information that your professor never talked about will show up on and you needed to have read your book in order to have had that information. You might show up to class one day and be expected to write about something that you should have read inside of your book, but you didn't know because you didn't read the book. So really, really important. Um, try your best to complete all the readings. It normally helps you to understand your class better and to get better grades overall. But also be sure to take notes as you read. Just as you would be taking notes with your professor in class, any type of important, bold, highlighted words or big events that take place inside of the story that you read, you probably want to write it down to help you, you know, remember it. You might be able to bring this up during class discussions, which can also help give you participation points at a later time. Don't, f don't forget that taking notes doesn't always have to be from other people. You can take notes on yourself as well. Number nine, review your syllabus before your class and also look at it throughout the semester. A lot of people only look at their syllabus when their professor first tells them to, if they even bother to do that, and then they never open it up and look at it again. They just let it sit there on the back burner until maybe their finals. But that's a really big mistake. Your syllabus can help prepare you throughout the semester so that you know when assignments are due and coming up. Constantly reviewing your syllabus throughout the year lets you know what's coming up so you can prioritize what's important, what work or information that you need to obtain right now, 
what you need to work on in the moment, what you need to study for. Um, maybe you have a big paper that's due in two weeks, but your professor hasn't mentioned it yet, and you have a lot of time this weekend, so you can work on it now before he officially reminds you, hey, you have you know a six-page paper that's due you know this week, and you need seven references. That's really important information to have. But if you're not someone that's constantly looking over your syllabus, you're not going to remember these exact dates. Another pro move is if you have the time, which you should make the time for this, but I know this is hard to do, you should actually try to set reminders in your phone's calendar. If you have an iPhone, this works perfectly, but Google Calendar works just fine too. You can actually set up and save the dates in which assignments are due and set reminders to go off You know, anywhere from a week or two in advance to a day or two in advance, etc. You can set multiple reminders reminders so that this way you won't forget and you can also save yourself time and not have to constantly look at your syllabus because it is saved there but please always make sure you hang on to that and that you check it throughout you know your semester or year don't just look at it one time and then throw it away you need it throughout the duration of your class. Number 10, create flashcards and use websites like Quizlet in order to both create your own quizzes and use other people's quizzes to help you retain and recall and remember information. It's a fun way to study and honestly, it's something that really, really helped me out um, with my Japanese class was purchasing flashcards, but you can also create your own flashcards too. Flashcards don't have to literally be an index card. You can literally use a piece of paper or anything else that works with you, helps you recall your memory of something that was written. Don't forget that flashcards don't have to just be you literally looking at cards. Consider making your own flashcards by hand. I feel like this helps you remember it even better because if you make your own flashcards by hand and you don't just buy them, you can kind of visualize and remember the answers that you wrote to those questions. You can also continue to remake flashcards. You don't have to just make them one time. You can literally start each study session with you creating a new set of flashcards by using scrap paper or anything else that you happen to have on hand. Quizlet can be used online, it's free, it's easy to use, and a lot of the stuff that you want to make quiz, you know, quizzes for, someone's already done it. So it's super easy for you to just use the information that's already there. But do check to make sure that the answers for these quizzes are actually correct if you're using someone else's because it is possible that while they do have the, you know, topic that you want, their answers are different from the topics and choices that you will have in your own class. Number 11, just as you're watching YouTube right now with this video, don't forget that you can also utilize YouTube to help you with studying. There are tons of videos that will teach you how to do complicated math like algebra, geometry, trigonometry, calculus, anything that you might struggle with, you can find a YouTube video on that will break it down and teach you how to do it. There are also plenty of websites like mathisfun.com that can help refresh your skills and brush you up on the basics of math. And there are even old fashioned computer games that you can play that can actually teach you how to solve math problems in a fun, easy to remember way. Don't forget that while you might be, you know, watching a YouTube video, um, playing a computer game, etc., you can also take notes on these things too that can help you later on. It also pays to do some sample problems, etc., to help make sure you really understand the material that you've been practicing, watching, and, you know, playing around with online. Number 12. Before submitting your work, always have at least two to four different people that you trust, that you know are intelligent, not just anybody, um, check over your work before you turn it in. This is especially, you know, something that you really need to do before submitting a lengthy essay. Um, you really want to make sure that it's free of any grammatic grammatical errors um, that someone else that you know you know and that you trust is a good you know English speaker good at writing reading whatever can probably catch things that you don't you know catch or that spell check doesn't don't forget the errors in your paper are not limited to just grammatical errors for example spell check might say everything is fine but maybe you have an excessive amount of wordiness maybe you're using too much slang maybe your paper cannot be easily you know comprehensible, whatever the case happens to be, there might be changes that you need to make. Not to mention that maybe the person's checking your paper, knows their stuff, you might not have cited your paper correctly, you might be missing references, whatever the case happens to be. You really want some extra eyes to catch this before your professor does, because depending on your teacher, you might not get your paper back and have the chance to correct it, and if or when you do, they might deduct anywhere from 10 to 20% of your paper for having them do so. So yeah, keep that in mind. Number 13, try your best to dedicate 15 to 30 minutes both before and after every class that you have. So for each class, that means you should be studying for roughly twice a week, four different times. So two days a week, four different times for each class. 
This way, oh, excuse me, <laughs> I bit my tongue. This way, you get a little bit of a refresher before you walk into your class, which can be super helpful in the event that you have a pop quiz. And you also have some time after your class to reflect, retain, and memorize the information that you, you know, just learned during your last session. So before and after. Even if you could just do it for five minutes, anything that you do helps. Please do not use the fact that, oh, I didn't have enough time to do 30 minutes. I couldn't do 15 minutes. Oh, well, I'm not going to study. You hear it so much, but I promise you studying is so important in order to pass your class. You can get lucky, but only so much. It can only get you so far. You will find that you are struggling and more stressed out if you don't take the time to study both before and after your class. Studying needs to be done more than just once a week and more than just after your class, but also before because this way, again, you can refresh your memory. So don't just wait until you have a quiz coming up and then try to cram and study everything at once. Really take initiative, take action, and think in advance ahead. You will be so relaxed and chill, and while everyone else is freaking out, oh my God, we have a quiz in this, I didn't study, I don't remember the answers, you know. You're not worried about it, you know everything because you already read it before you came into class. No, you didn't remember the dates from that history book, but you just so happened to have briefed over it before you walked into class. So actually you are prepared for this pop quiz. You know what year this happened. You know what year it didn't happen. You know the names of the important people within the story because you practice, you studied before and after your classes. Number 14, similar to another point, another point previously in my video, but for this one, don't forget that you can join a pre-existing study group. You don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel and start your own, although that would be cool and nice. But don't forget, you can join groups that already exist. So if you are someone that is struggling with the subject, more than likely other people are too. You can study together with a group of people and these people can even become your friends, which would be great in the end too. So don't forget that you don't have to struggle alone. There's other people that can help you with, you know, mastering that math lesson or mastering that history class or whatever the case happens to be or Japanese. You can get the help that you need, but you have to actually seek it, look out for it. So sign up for study groups, sign up for tutoring. It's 100% free. Don't just stop at tutoring. You can oftentimes learn a lot more being inside of a group setting. You can bounce ideas off of each other too. So while tutoring is nice to do one-on-one, -on -one, don't forget that you can study with a group of people that might even be in your class. So that can be even more helpful. Once again, making you feel more confident, raising your hand, asking for help, but also making you new friends, making you feel comfortable with the people that are in your class. And again, getting new ideas, answers to questions that you didn't think of, and even new ways of solving problems or you know memorizing information that you hadn't previously heard of or done before. Number 15, there's nothing stupid about raising your hands. The only dumb questions are the ones you don't ask. You know how the saying goes, raise your hand, be brave. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're afraid, it hurts, you don't know what people are gonna think of you, but honestly, you're gonna look a lot stupider when you're the only person walking out of that class with an F and repeating next year versus if you were to raise your hand in every class and ask a dumb question or make a stupid comment or be wrong. It's better for you to try anyway, take a risk, take a chance. Your professor will remember you and will appreciate your bravery, your honesty, your willingness to take a chance. And so will your classmates. Yes, somebody might laugh or giggle, but to be honest, they're gonna get used to you raising your hand. And a lot of people are going to admire you. They're gonna be glad that you asked the questions that they were afraid to ask. They're gonna be like, wow, someone said something that I wanted to say, or I wanted to ask that. You might even get a conversation going and this will definitely get you on your professor's good side. The squeaky wheel gets the oil and closed mouths don't get fed. So if you need help, you have to raise your hand. It's unlikely that your professor is going to baby you and come by and notice that you need help. You're an adult, you're not a kid anymore. You can have a nice professor like me that will help you out. But the reality is most people aren't going to be that vigilant. You're gonna have a huge class. You might have a small class, whatever the case is. Your professor ain't worried. They get paid regardless at the end of the day. And again, you're grown now. You're not a kid, you're not in high school, you're not in junior high, you're not in elementary school, the same kindergarten. It is up to you to ask for the things that you need. It is up to you to arrange tutoring. It's up to you to find a study group. It's up to you to study. You're not at home anymore. Mom and dad are not going to force you to put down the video game, to, you know, stop having sex and going to parties. Nobody's going to make you do your work but you. You have to take school seriously if you want to pass.
Number 16, similar to number 15, participate in class. It doesn't necessarily have to be you raising your hand to ask for help, but anytime that your teacher needs an assistant, needs someone to help demonstrate something, raise your hand, be the go-to person. Again, I know it's embarrassing, humiliating, you're putting yourself on the spot, but you're going to make yourself lovable to your classmates. They're gonna see you as outgoing, cool, risky student, which will make people wanna to talk to you. And two, your professor will admire the fact that you are someone that is not afraid, someone that is willing to get out of their comfort zone and willing to help them. Nothing's worse than being a teacher and needing someone to help you demonstrate something and everyone being shy, no one raising their hand. Your teacher will remember you, they'll notice that, and they'll be thinking about this when they're grading your work. So you really want to be on their good side and this will definitely help get you there. Number 17, piggybacking off of number 16, join and or attend any type of club or any type of event, party, whatever, that your teacher is hosting. Most of the time, professors oftentimes, especially for like science or math classes, they are also over groups. So like different clubs at your school. So for example, your technology teacher is probably gonna be over the computer making club or something like that, like how mine's was. If you have trouble in, you know, with math or anything like that, you should probably join these study groups or whatever, not study groups, excuse me. You should probably join these after school activity clubs. Your instructor is going to remember, hey, you're that kid from, you know, my computer making club they are going to have more mercy on you when grading your paper and if they notice that you're struggling in class they're probably going to feel more comfortable bringing it up to you because you're in their club you're, you're like their child now you're like family so they're going to care more about you care more about your grades and you have easy access to your professor outside of class where you can ask them you know questions not related to the club that you're doing about regular schoolwork because now you have them you know they're stuck now you have them they're stuck in a room with you and yeah they're kind of at your disposal, if you will. You can ask any questions that you want, get any help that you need, while also learning a new subject, new activity, and making new friends inside of this club. Your professor will appreciate the fact that you signed up for a club that they are over, or that you attended an event in which they were, you know, the ones that are giving a speech, or a party that they're hosting at the school. They will notice you, they will recognize you, and they will appreciate the fact that you are thinking of them, and that you um, supported them, you know, with their speech, supported them in their event, whatever the case happens to be, do whatever you can to be on their good side. Number 18, this should go without saying, but always use manners and always greet your professor. Say please and thank you. Thank them for the lesson that they gave. Thank them for bringing in a demo to show you guys what, you know, whatever this piece in the computer looked like. Thank them for taking the effort and time to do those type of things. Don't be creepy and flirtatious with your professor, but you know what I mean. Like just come off as being super friendly, super grateful, super appreciative. They'll realize that you're trying to be teacher's pet and you wanna know what? It'll ultimately make them happy. They'll appreciate it. They see that you're putting in effort and work in their class. They see that you're trying hard. You're a friendly student. You care about, you know, the fact that they've gone out of their way to give you demonstrations. You see how hard they worked in their PowerPoint. They like praise. A lot of the time, teachers, professors, whatever, we don't get recognition for the 10 hour PowerPoint that we put together at home. Our boss doesn't see it. Our boss isn't paying us extra for it. They do it because they love their job. They love their students and they want you to pass their class. So you're probably going to be the only person that actually thinks to do these things and they will most certainly remember you for it. And they'll keep that in mind when they're grading your paper. Number 19, turn in all of your work on time and when I say on time I mean early you do not wait until the deadline you don't wait until 1150 at night you don't even wait until the day of if you have the time your work should be getting turned in at least three days to a week in advance you should never be turning in your assignments the day before the day of an hour before it's due five minutes left don't do that. We've all been there. It will inevitably happen, but go out of your way to start on your work in advance and to finish it in advance. It keeps you from being stressed out. You don't have to worry about your computer having problems or your internet being down, or if you forget something, it also gives your professor time to correct your paper in advance. Most professors, if you turn in your paper early, for starts, you're gonna be on their goody goody two shoe list. And secondly, they will grade your paper in advance and send it back to you if there are issues. So this way you can correct them and in most situations they won't deduct any points because you turned in your paper early but if you turned in your paper a day before an hour before it's due they don't have time to check over individual papers so when they do give it back to you if there's issues with it you're gonna get whatever grade that you got the first time around which might be bad 
So I would highly suggest that you do all your work in advance and this also keeps you from falling behind. If your papers start to pile up because you waited so long to do this paper and then there's an even bigger one due the next week, so you're trying to focus on that one too, you're gonna give up, you're gonna end up failing your class. I've been there, done that. Don't do that. If worse comes to worse, you're better off turning in a half done paper, a bad paper, than nothing at all. Don't give up, keep going, push through, but to avoid being in that situation altogether, start on your work as soon as you are given the assignment, do the reading before you're given the assignment, do whatever you need to do to prepare for it, and turn in your work as early as possible. Ask for help if you need it. Number 20. While you are an adult and you are permitted to do this because you are a college student, try your best to avoid doing things like eating, drinking, or using electronics in your class. And yes, that includes a cell phone and a computer, even if you're using it for taking notes. For starts, I personally don't believe that people that take notes in their computer or phone um, retain that information properly because once again, you're not physically writing it, it's not really going to your brain and sticking, and two, you will easily get distracted with other things. You'll find yourself opening up Tinder in class, you'll be watching Facebook videos, you'll be watching YouTube, you'll be doing all kind of other stuff. You'll get distracted easily. It's so much better to just come to class. You can bring your computer and your phone for when you need it because there will be times where using it in class is useful, but for the most part, you really want to rely on using your notebook only. Your phone should be used for taking pictures and your computer for if like there's a lot of information and you really really need to type it down so that you have it, that's fine. But don't rely on it because it will become a distraction. A distraction. If you're busy eating and drinking in class, you're probably going to be distracting the people around you and yourself. You're going to be too busy munching on your food, slurping on your drink, that you're probably not going to really be listening to what's being said and going on in class. So yeah, try your best to handle these things at another time. Don't bring them to class. If you do bring them to class, do not eat, drink, play on your computer while a lecture is going on. Please wait until the be you know beginning of your class when people are just talking or the end of class or some type of time in between work when you're not doing any work and there's a break. Maybe you finish before everybody else. Use that downtime to eat, drink, play around on your computer or type up your notes. But try your best to stay off of your electronics. Keep food and drink out of your mouth. Don't find distractions. It will hurt you in the end because you're not going to have your undivided full attention on your professor, on the screen, on the board, whatever you are focusing on in class. And number 21, similar to number 20, make sure you handle everything from 20 before you go to class. So that means that you need to eat, drink, use the bathroom before you have class. I mentioned these points in another video, but this is specifically for students that are struggling. Make sure that you handle, you know, your issues of being hungry when you need to go to the bathroom before class starts. You don't want to be getting up in the middle of the class for a bathroom break or because you're hungry and you need to go eat a Snickers in the bathroom like how I have. Yes, I know it's unsanitary, but I was hungry. I couldn't help it. So yeah, you don't want to do anything crazy like that. You want to be in class for the entirety of the time. Remember, your teacher already got their degree. They already got their paycheck too. You're paying them. So the money that you're paying them, they're not even teaching you. They're teaching other kids. Do you want that? Do you want to give your teacher money to teach other people besides you? You're not getting that money back. There's no deduction. You can't say, I went to the bathroom for, you know, 30 minutes. So I want 30 minutes you know, worth of my tuition back. Nope, they got it. So you should want to be in there for the duration of the time your teacher is teaching. Even if they go over time, I would rather stay longer because hey, free, free money basically. Number 22, read your notes to yourself at home. I think when a lot of people study, they simply look at their textbook and there are any papers that their teacher gave them, but they don't spend a lot of time actually going over their notes and not just flipping through your notebook, but actually read your notes out loud. Read them to yourself, read them in your head, read them out loud and do this in silence. You don't always have to have music. Some people feel like they study better with music, but to be honest, I thought that too. And I found as I've gotten older, I feel like I actually study and retain my information a lot better when there's no music, but rather total silence. Now I understand why library want you to be quiet so yeah if you need to go somewhere private where you have big open space like a library do it but do keep in mind that at college oftentimes you will be distracted because your friends will be in there being silly playing making noise flirting kissing whatever type of stuff going on and trying to recruit people to go to bars and parties which sounds fun but it's not gonna be fun when you're getting deported because of your low attendance and bad grades in Japan so think about that before you choose to participate in those things it's gonna have long-term consequences so yeah, you need to find time to actually read over your notes to yourself, 
because it does no good if you just take notes and you're not actually looking back at them. And by looking back at them, I don't just mean skimming over them. You need to actually be reading what you wrote. Defeats the purpose in taking notes if you're not going to actually read them. That's the purpose of notes, right? Number 23, go to bed early and wake up early. If you know you have a class at 9 a.m., you should not be going to bed at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. You shouldn't be going out drinking the night before either so you're not hungover. You also want to make sure that you go to bed at a decent time too. So not only should you be, I'm sorry, you also want to make sure you wake up at a decent time too. So go to bed at a decent time and wake up at a decent time. For classes at 9 a.m., you shouldn't be waking up any later than 6.30 in my opinion. And the reason why I say so early, you want to give yourself time to get ready, time to freshen up in the morning, time to watch the news time to eat a good breakfast and if you can even time to exercise i find that i retain and learn a lot better if i just finish exercising and you know i've already eaten i've gotten a fresh shower i feel you know fresh i feel like i'm ready to learn i'm ready to you know retain information that my professor is giving me so really try to make a nice morning routine or whatever time of day your class is routine even if your class is in the evening same thing maybe you need to take a midday nap when i was taking my computer class it was in the evening so i would normally take a nap um i would go home for my day class because i had a class that was in the morning i would go home i would take a nap I would eat lunch and by the time I wake up I'd have a little bit of a pre-dinner and then I would go to my class and I knew afterwards I was going to actually eat my dinner. So have a routine down, um, have an actual plan for what you do each day but make sure that once again you are actually going to bed on time. If you are really sleepy um, you know when you get to class or hungover, tired, whatever it's going to be difficult for you to concentrate, difficult for you to learn. You're not going to memorize the stuff that you, you know, saw or wrote down in class. It's going to go in one ear, out the other, because your mind is focused on your bed. Your mind is focused on, oh, why are these lights on? I have a hangover. You're not going to be in the right place to learn. Number 24. Always come to your class prepared. That means checking your email, checking your syllabus, checking over any notes, um, checking to make sure that there's no notifications, no homework that was due, um, etc. You really want to check your schedule, your itinerary, and know what's going on in class so that there are no surprises. The worst feeling is, of course, walking into a class, finding out that a paper was due that you did write, but that you left at home, or that something that you had started on was due, but you didn't remember that it was due today. This is where having reminders and looking over your syllabus throughout the semester it really helps you but always make sure that you check this stuff every time before you have that specific class just to give you a refresher um, you'll oftentimes find that it might even tell you maybe you needed a particular book maybe you needed to bring something into class so really important information that you have otherwise missed and last but not least, number 25, reward yourself. You need to give yourself an incentive to actually study and work hard. If all you ever do is work, 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 school, 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 no party, no date, no fun, no friends, no drinking, no nothing. Not to say you have to do things like drinking or having sex, etc. but you get what I mean. Whatever you like to do, whatever is fun for you, whatever excites you, if you don't give yourself time to have fun, to do things that you enjoy, you are not going to stick with this plan. You're gonna be miserable and you're not going to enjoy your time here in Japan. Of course you want to enjoy your time living in Japan. You want to watch anime, you want to read manga, you want to try new food. Reward yourself with those things, reward yourself. Say, hey, if I finish you know, these 30 minutes of studying, I'm gonna go out for yakiniku. Or if I finish you know, these 15 minutes of studying, if I finish these 15 minutes of studying, I'm going to read the next chapter and, you know, my anime, my, my manga, whatever. I'm going to watch, an, an you know, an episode of anime or I'm going to listen to that new K-pop album or whatever you want to do. Give yourself a small thing that's easy to obtain, not something ridiculous, so that you can actually feel like you're working towards something. Make big and long-term goals. If I pass this class, I'm going to go to Hokkaido to see snow monkeys. So give yourself something that will keep you working and make your working work Wow. Of course, the great within itself and the privilege of being in Japan and remaining a student here should be enough. But of course, we need little steps along the way too. You are in a new country. You do want to have friends. You do want to have fun. Give yourself things to look forward to. You don't have to spend all your time working and studying. You can still retain and remember information, even if you do waste some time doing things you don't need to do, like partying and going on a date. But we're human. We're social creatures. We need to have fun and do other things. There's nothing wrong with that. Always remember to reward yourself, whether it be giving yourself a piece of candy, letting yourself watch a movie, whatever the case might be. But don't forget to still live within your means. You are a student. So that's that. 
thank you so much for watching. These are my 25 tips to help students that are struggling academically here in Japan. If you have any tips you'd like to add to this list, maybe you are a student or you were a um, student in the past that you would like to share with other people that are coming to Japan as students or that are here struggling as students, please feel free to share your experience down below. As always, everyone's situation experience is different, but I wish you the best of luck as a student. Um, please don't give up. Don't be a quitter like how I was. If you do fail your class, you do make a mistake, you do goof up your year, you do mess up with your financial aid, it's okay. You can fix it. You can work and earn money to go back to school. It's never too late. You can always go back and fix and change the things that you messed up. You can move forward. Remember, the good things that's coming for you is in your future. It's not your past. You have to put it behind you. You have to keep going. I know it's hard. I know it sounds cliche, but it's so true. There's no need to stress out over it. And it's really the enemy um, talking to you that's telling you, oh, well, you already failed that class. So don't worry about it. You're not going to have a high enough GPA or you already failed that assignment. So you're not going to pass this class. Well, you already paid for it. So you might as well keep going anyway so you can get the information to pass it next time around. So be positive. Be optimistic. Is it worth it to let all your money go down the drain because you know you won't pass the class? You've already paid for it. They're not going to give you a refund. Keep going. So don't give up. And just because you failed one paper, even if it's a really big one, and your teacher said that they absolutely do not allow you to redo it. Your teacher might make an exception for you because you've shown how hard you're working, because you've shown that you are trying to pass this class. You've begged them. You've made an effort. You've met with them. You've done everything that you can. Don't give up. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an entire playlist and blog post section specifically for students in Japan. Um, I highly suggest that you check that out. Sorry, I kind of spit for students in Japan. <laughs> I highly suggest that you check that out too. And I would also appreciate it if you follow me on my social media. I have an Instagram and Twitter account that you can follow. You can add me on Snapchat. And I'd appreciate it if you like my Facebook page as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.